Representative Bryant. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, first, I know it is late, and so I just want to go back over a couple things that I think I heard, and then um, I know that there are other members that are listening tonight, so I want to recap a couple things uh, and just some final thoughts. So um, can I just go back to the statement about um, uh, when, when these decisions are made about the baby being viable and the mother's health, right? So um, the physician that's making the decision about the viability of the baby and the mother, it's the same physician making the decision on both? Yes. So... Actually, I think the answer would really be maybe. It maybe. depends on the case. So I guess, I guess my question is... Um, often the decision's gonna have to be made on wh whose health comes first. How does the one decision, I mean, because I'm just going back on my own children's birth. So I know that you have, for vaginal birth, you have the one doctor there for yourself, but you also have a pediatrician available that's gonna come in and care for the baby, correct? No. That's not true. There's the only time there's a pediatrician available is if you're expecting something to be wrong with the baby. At all points of the delivery. I mean, yeah. at, I only ever have a nurse in the room with me. Who does the APGAR check and the all nurse. that? The nurse. The nurse. The nurse or me. Okay, but the, the the physician is going to be making a decision on both the baby and the mother at the same time. One one physician making Poss the decision on possibly. both in the case of an abortion. Possibly. Okay. I mean, it would, it would, and it would depend on the situation. accepted standards of medical care. If the case requires it, they get the support they need but, because physicians are trained to make these decisions. Legislators so, aren't. So let, let me just back up then. So I just want to be sure that what we're saying. So presently, there is not the requirement of two physicians to be there in case of a viable birth. We're not changing that. With I don't this know piece of legislation, did I not hear someone say just a moment ago that we right there now there is nothing in law that talks about how a a patient is attended and by by uh, during a birth? What we have done is put in place and it, has it been enjoined as well? It is two doctors at a at a, at an abortion? Yeah, and, I'm not talking about others. I'm talking about right, at an abortion. Yeah, birth? No. Presently, there are two doctors available for an abortion. This bill changes that. No, um, the the current Illinois law uh, requires two physicians to be present in the case of a post viability abortion, which again, uh, I think we need to just underscore is extremely rare. I mean, will you know in advance that there'll be Pardon a? Me? You know in advance that there's going to be a. Uh, you, you know in advance that that baby is going to be born alive and be viable? How do you know to have that second physician there? So you, you make I'm trying that, to understand the process. No, I'm not no, trying no. to be conscious. So, uh, no, you would make that determination, again, based on medical standards, based on the facts of the case in front of you. And so, um, again, just to reinforce what Dr. Wells said, um, and now I'm going outside of the abortion context, but I'm going okay. into the context of, okay, go ahead. So currently, if this were to happen, I had a patient that this happened to. In this case, we wouldn't even call it an abortion. I had a patient that I was talking about earlier. They were diagnosed with a very severe syndrome that was not compatible with life. They were 26 weeks along. By the time all the testing was done, we did an induction of delivery because the baby was not going to survive. The Maternal fetal medicine doctors did all the diagnosing, amniocentesis, all of that. The second physician that was there was the NICU attendant. I delivered the baby at 26 weeks. The NICU was present. The baby was born alive. She lived for three minutes. The mother held the baby the entire time. No measures were taken. They did not want any measures taken because they knew their baby was not going to survive more than a couple minutes. That's how most post-viability births happen. I, I understand that that's how maybe they most happen. I'm asking what is the requirement right now? Right now for an abortion, is there a requirement that a second physician be present or available? Only after viability. Does this law change that second physician having to be present in the same circumstances? 
This law repeals the criminal abortion law of 1975, including the requirement. I'm a pretty simple person. Just a yes or no. I can't answer this yes or no. It, it repeals that provision of the Illinois abortion law that requires a second physician to be there in abortions after viability. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, uh, again, I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm kind of a cut and dried kind of person. So I, I'm going to just kind of go back to the the title of this being a Women's Reproductive Health Care Act. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful title. Um, I think that if we were actually here tonight to talk about women's reproductive health care, um, we would be discussing some of the other issues that were mentioned, maternity care, fertility care, birth control. Um, I, I believe that this bill um, flies in the face of a, a woman at her most vulnerable time, um, generally scared, um, confused, perhaps mentally ill, perhaps, de perhaps developmentally disabled, seeking um, help from other people. And at a time when they're that vulnerable, um, we don't offer them the things that were just mentioned. We're offering them the ability to take the life of an innocent unborn child, one that someone else might want. Now, I do understand and appreciate um, that um, we could argue all night about whether a woman has a right to do with her body what she wants to do. I certainly will not argue that because a few folks in here where we talk about, you know, um, fighting for our rights or whatever. But I will argue all night that an, one person does not have the right to take the life of another human being. And I think it's evident with this piece of legislation that we're a little bit confused about when that person is a person when we're still saying that um, we will keep in place laws when, um, if, there's a, if there's a baby that is wanted, then there's value to that baby's, baby's life. And someone can, can get a felony. If the baby's not wanted, then apparently they have no value at all. There's no such test in the law? I'm not talking about the law, Representative. I'm not talking about the law. I'm, I'm talking about basic human rights. If it's a felony to kill a child because it's wanted, again, it's wrong to kill asks, a child because it's unwanted. Nobody's going to ask if the baby was wanted or not. I'm never going to argue that with you. I won't argue that with you. What I will argue with you is that this is a human life. I won't get into religion with you. You know where I am on this. But I will tell you that this is a human life that is fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, period. I want to go over just a couple other things on here just to remind the other members that are listening here tonight because there have been conversations that have been going on on the sidelines and I know in, in caucuses. So this is what I'm taking away from this tonight. This bill removes a second physician when there's viability, changes the definition of viability, no independent rights of the unborn child, questions regarding if this bill also applies to parental notification. Those are, those are real and true questions tonight. And then to just go to this process once again. The people that I represent live a minimum of three hours from here. I found out about this bill being called tonight um, when I was unfortunately still about an hour from here because I've been kind of ill. Um, there's no possible way that any of the people that I represent could have been here. When this was HB 2495, there were 20,000 individuals who put in witness slips to be heard. Today, Senate, Senate Bill 25 was hijacked in order to make sure that this was heard on a Sunday night, on a holiday weekend, at the ninth hour, in the, what I would really consider the secrecy. It's rushed. I would have liked to have heard the other questions that Representative Bourne had. I believe that Representative Windhorse had other questions. I believe that every single person's name should have been read tonight, whether they were in support or opposition. They should have had the right to do that when that was asked. This process, although long, has still been hijacked. Um, it's, I, I find you representative, to, even though you and I don't 
agree on some things. We've often agreed to agree, to disagree agreeably. Uh, I don't think that the way that this has been handled, um, I, it, it, it's a travesty for the high calling that we have and for the high position of, of this, this chamber and this house. I don't think it rises to the quality of legislator that either you are or the leadership of the House of Representatives, and I'm disappointed that it's been handled this way today. Uh, for those of you who are members who are listening, please listen to what's really been said tonight. This bill is not what it's being presented. It is not a Women's Reproductive Health Care Act. It is a bill to take the life of the innocent unborn, the end.